Grand Theft Autos Online Import Export has been available since December the 13th, 2016. And yet, it is still one of the best ways to make money in Grand Theft Auto Online. With its hefty payouts and fun missions, I highly recommend Import Export for both expert and brand new players in Grand Theft Auto Online. How you going everybody? This is Fantago with 100% Gaming and in today's video I'm going to be showing you guys how to maximize your profits as a beginner with Import Export. Now if you guys didn't know already how Import Export works, let me explain. Basically you steal the car, that's the importing, then you get to modify the car, flip it around, change it up a little bit just as you like it, then you get to sell it and that's the exporting. When importing a car, there's three different ranges. You can have standard, medium, or high-end cars. But more on that a little bit later. Unfortunately, after we export a car, there is a 20-minute timer that blocks us from selling another car for that period of time. So, we need to develop a way around this to make some extra money in between. Now it seems fitting, since we have to be in a CEO in order to import and export cars, we may as well use that same system to do the VIP missions such as Headhunter for that extra juicy cash. Now in order to start this method we do need to spend a little bit of money. It's as the saying goes, you need to spend money to make money. Now we're going to need two things. We're going to need a CEO office and we're also going to need a vehicle warehouse. Now the cheapest office is actually the Mays Bank West as you see here on Dynasty 8 Executive. It costs exactly a million dollars to purchase. It is the cheapest one guys. There are different options available. Honestly buy this one. There's no difference in what they do. Now after you have purchased your office, you do want to make your way over to your computer here. You're going to log in and you're going to find three different options. You want to click on vehicle cargo and come over to the warehouse map. Now this is where you buy your vehicle warehouse. Guys, I highly suggest you purchase yourself the La Mesa Vehicle Warehouse. It does run $1.5 million, so it is a little bit expensive, but you will make that money back really quick. There are a range of different warehouses, but again, they just cost more money than this one, and they do the exact same thing. Guys, if you're starting out, if you're beginning, even if you have millions of dollars to spend and waste, there's no point. Just buy the La Mesa Garage. Now after you have purchased your warehouse, it's time to go back to your computer and click on the vehicle cargo because we are going to be collecting our very first import export car. Click on source vehicle and confirm. Now here you have a little pop up saying which vehicle, the value and the plate. The game always basically tells you where you need to go for every mission. The missions do drastically change so it keeps them fairly entertaining. Once you've started the mission, get in your vehicle of choice and head over to the location that it specifies. Alright, once you get to the location, you might have to do a few things, take out a few enemies, every mission will be different. But once you're in your car, it'll look something like this. You've collected your vehicle cargo, you now have to take it back to your warehouse and you have a repair cost. Now the repair cost is very, very important. The vehicle will need to be repaired if it becomes too damaged. The more damage it takes, the higher repair cost will be. The CEO, which is you, will be charged by the mechanic upon returning to the warehouse. So guys, when driving this car, you've got to be really, really careful. Not to crash into any obstacles, not to crash into any cars, because it does actually charge you once you deliver it. Keep an eye out for other players as they may want to come along and destroy your vehicle and also sometimes the mission will spawn in helicopters and other NPC cars to try and shoot you and take the car back. So my suggestion to combat this is seriously just drive as fast as you can and ignore the enemies. Don't try and shoot them, don't try and take them on, it just takes too much time. Get in the car, start driving and make your getaway. Now after you have successfully collected that car and put it in your warehouse, you're going to come over to this laptop here. This is where we sell our cars. Now I spoke earlier about different 
ranges of cars. There's standard, there's mid-range, and finally there's high-end. Now, as you can see here, I'm going through the different ranges of cars. There is 10 standard, 10 mid-range, and finally there is 12 top range cars. Now why does this matter? This matters because each different range actually sells for different amounts of money. Basically, we always only ever want to sell a top range car as they're the only cars that can sell for $100,000 per mission. Basically, if you're selling the other cars, you're just wasting your time and that 20 minute timer. Now, though the garage can carry 40 different cars, we never actually want to reach this limit. We never want to take the garage to over 32 cars. Now, when you're sourcing a car, the game takes a look at the cars that you have currently in your vehicle warehouse and gives you one that you currently do not have. So if you have all of the standard range cars, all of the medium range cars, but let's say you only have 11 out of the 12 top range cars, Every time you go to source another vehicle, it will always give you that top range car that you are missing. So the best way to do this is if you like to drive the T20 supercar, it is a top range car, you sell that. When you go to source a vehicle, the game will always look at your vehicles and find out that you do not currently have the T20 in your garage and it will make you source that vehicle. Now, if you go over 32 vehicles, that means you have a duplicate car in your garage and the game will get confused, this method will no longer work and it will chuck out random cars at you. So you always want to make sure you don't have any double cars and you always only have top range cars available to source. Alright, so I know that that is a lot of information to process, it's a little bit to wrap your head around, but just make sure you never have more than 32 cars and you always sell high-end cars and you will be set for gold. Now when you're just starting out, I highly suggest just continuously going back to your office and sourcing new vehicles. Every time you get a top range car, go ahead and sell it, but don't sell your standard or mid range cars. This will take a little bit of time, but once you've got your 10 standard range cars and your 10 medium range cars and at least one top range car, you're good to start following this method to make the most money possible using VIP missions and import export sell missions. Now that you've done all the prerequisites that you need to do, it's time to start making some big bucks. We're going to start by going to the vehicle warehouse, picking a top range car and selling that one. Here, you're going to have to customize a car a little bit. Guys, I always just do the first option that comes around. It's much quicker that way. You can customize your car to make it look cool, but really, in the long run, it just takes up more time. It means you're not going to be making as much money. Now, we always want to sell the car for $100,000. Yes, it does cost $20,000 to do but in the long run it's always more money you always want to do it this way all right so we've just delivered our t20 to the location on the map we have taken a six percent damage loss it's about four thousand dollars but it's not really too bad this number will go up and down depending on how much you crash just try and get it as little as possible and you'll be good making all the money that you need the next thing we're going to do is start a vip mission which is Headhunter. Now when we launch Headhunter, we want to be in the city. That way all of our targets are only in the city and they're not spread out all across the country. It makes this mission so much easier. Now I am doing this in a buzzard. Now I am doing this in the buzzard. It is a $1.75 million purchase. Now if we are doing this process and the buzzard goes on sale, I highly recommend picking it up. It makes the missions a little bit easier, but honestly, it's not essential. I'm just using it right now because I already have it and it does make it easier. You can do all of this, what I'm doing now, in just any car of your choosing. Alright, so I am on the final approach to the last target now. As you can see, I've got 10 minutes and 45 seconds left. Now, all of these missions that I'm going to be talking about today, you have about a 5 minute lead rate in every mission to complete it. Because there's a 20 minute timer between each mission, we're going to be doing 4 missions that all take about 5 minutes each. 
Sometimes you might do it quicker, sometimes you might do it a little bit longer. Don't worry about it, just try and keep it as close to 5 minutes as possible. Now there is one more VIP mission that we will be doing after and that is Sightseer. The reason we're not doing that now is because it will have a cooldown timer on it. After you complete a VIP mission, it locks all other missions in that system for 5 minutes. However, Headhunter is on a 10 minute timer itself. Basically, in 5 minutes time, we can do the Sightseer mission. But first, we're going to go source that top range car that we basically just sold. So I'm just driving my X80 Proto back to the warehouse. This mission's nearly done and we can move on to completing Sightseer now. Alrighty, so after we've entered the garage we want to run straight back out, come to our VIP work and start Sightseer. Now a few little tips for this mission. I always find doing the little game mode that we have to do, this one's data crack, not in any vehicle. It sort of tricks the game sometimes a little bit to make it think that you're actually running on foot to get to the site seer location. In fact, we're not. We're actually just going to jump in a vehicle. I'm going to use the buzzard again, guys. You use whatever car you feel like using and get over to that location. Now, there are going to be three different locations that we need to get to. Sometimes this mission can be really, really frustrating and take you all the way out to Polito Bay. This mission can really take a toll on the time that we have in between selling the cars, but guys, just do it as quick as you can. Alright, so this mission has taken a little bit over five minutes, but not too much to worry about. I am on the last package and I am picking it up right as we speak. And we're going to see quite a nice amount of money put into our account. $22.5 thousand dollars for completing that mission. It's really not too bad at all. Now right about now your timer should be up and you should be able to go and sell another vehicle. Alright so we've jumped into the ETR and we're delivering it to the buyer for another hundred thousand dollars. Now you might actually notice right about now these two vehicles are spawning during my sell mission and they're trying to damage my car. Now this happens because I'm in a solo lobby. And I'm in a solo lobby because I've chosen to be. The reason for this is so there's no griefers that are going to come and destroy my vehicle. Now there are plenty of ways to get into a solo lobby. I'm not going to do a video on that. But if you're interested in jumping into a solo lobby, I recommend going and finding a video. There's plenty of them online which will show you exactly how to do that. I'm going to do a little fun montage for you guys so you can see all the missions that I did in order so you can mimic this within the hour. Alright, so that was a fun little montage of the past 40 minutes of game time that I managed to do. Now, you did see me sell a car here. Guys, here is a list of the cars that you should sell. As you can see, they sell for quite a bit amount of money. Alright, so I've done the calculations and I'm going to be showing you gamers how you can make over $400,000 per hour with import-export in 2020. I hope you're as excited to see it as I am to show you. Let's get into the figures. Alright guys, and here we are at the profit and loss sheet. Now first up we have Site Seer missions. We did four of those for a total of 89k. We did four Headhunter missions for a total of 85k. We sold one NPC car for $8,000. 
And finally, the big money, the import slash export, we sold three vehicles for 240 grand. When we add it all up, this comes to an amazing amount of $420,000 per hour. Now this is an insane amount of money for any player in Grand Theft Auto Online, let alone people who are just starting out and have just started their import-export business. If you're looking for a solo way to make money in Grand Theft Auto Online, import-export is without a doubt the best way to go about it. Now, no, I haven't included the damage to the cars that you may occur while completing these missions. And the reason is, that's just way too hard to try and normalize. One mission you might take no damage, one mission you might take 2,000 damage, another mission, if you're really unlucky, you might take 25,000 in damage. Some missions have NPCs that shoot your cars, and some players might not be as skilled drivers in others. So in this regard, there's just too many factors to determine what the average repair cost is, so I'm leaving it at zero. And you guys should be aiming for zero anyway, so it shouldn't matter. Alright gamers, this has been fan to go with 100% gaming. If you've enjoyed the video, please leave it a like, comment and subscribe as it really helps out with the YouTube algorithm. Also, make sure to share this video with your friends so they can have the knowledge that you have now. Alright gamers, we'll see you in the next video.